Hello, I'm Eric Sorensen, and this is The West Block, Politics, Perspectives, and Players. Space, the final frontier. Even before Star Trek popularized that notion more than 50 years ago, Earthlings were already populating space with satellites and spacecraft. Sputnik was the first satellite in 1957, the Americans put up Explorer a few months later, and Canada was third with the satellite Alouette in 1962. Since then, scores of satellites have been lifted into space and a lot of other spacecraft, and Earth orbit is now littered with space junk that is posing a greater threat every year. Michel Doyon is the Deputy Director for Space at Global Affairs Canada and an expert in space debris, which sort of tells us a little bit of what we want to talk about today. First of all, how many satellites are circling around above our heads right now and what else is up there? Okay, well, today there's about 2,000 satellites in orbit right now and mm -hmm. um, there are many objects being tracked, uh, over 20,000 objects larger than a baseball, 10 centimeter, are tracked continuously seven days uh, a week, 24 hours a day, plus a large number of millimeter or centimeter objects, like hundreds of thousands. So, and they're moving fast. Like it's, they are, in fact. Uh, and if there are thousands of them, mm -hmm. are they not hitting each other all the time? Okay, let's put things in perspective. You know, the Earth is kind of a big object. Yeah. The objects travel at 7.5 kilometers per second, but space is mainly empty. You know, a lot of traffic, but even 20,000 objects in, in space leaves a lot of free area. Mm -hmm. But they all converge sometimes in the north, so many chances of collision, and this is being tracked regularly. Well, that's right, because I mean, because with infinite amount of time going forward, eventually something's going to crisscross. And I guess there have been collisions, some of them even on purpose, like the Chinese apparently shot something out of the out of space just, just to see if they could do it uh, 12 years ago. But, but tell me a little bit about the sort of the collision rate that, uh, that has you know, been happening so far. Okay, so back in 2007, uh, there was a Chinese ASAT test that was conducted. This generated itself like thousands of debris. Two years later, there was a Iridium satellite that hit a Cosmos, uh, a Russian satellite, a defunct satellite, that generated another thousands of debris. So these were the main event in the recent years that caused many debris that put space assets at risk. There was uh, back in, in, in March, there was another ASAT test conducted by India as well. So, so are we seeing more and more close calls? Well, we're seeing more, the test is something, close calls is something else. So with the okay. amount of debris in space, the amount of increasing satellites going into space, you get more and more traffic and this is being um, Verified operators, satellite operators, are trying to make sure that they get information. Information is generally provided by the U.S. Um, STRATCOM, the Department of U.S. Defense, giving, taking observations and providing this information free to every operator to make analysis, assess risks, and make maneuvers if needed. Now, you mentioned uh, satellites, that there are 2,000 up there right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, as you point out, SpaceX is sending them up there now at 60 at a time. And we're looking at having upwards of 10,000 or more satellites. Like that's such a, a, an increase. So are those satellites going to be at risk from this junk or do they themselves become part of the risk of having too much stuff up there? Well, this is an interesting question. Uh, there is definitely a game changer right now. The amount of satellite going into space is tenfold or going very, very quickly uh, increasing. Yeah. The amount of traffic in space is definitely increasing right now. Mm -hmm. um, there are many um, groups discussing those elements, uh, whether to control access uh, with regulation, good behavior, um, guidelines. In fact, there was a recent um, approval of 21 best practice guidelines by the United Nations Committee on Peaceful Use of Space. That is the result of the last eight or five, uh, eight years of where 92 countries adopted those guidelines, agreed that space is important for everybody and that good behaviors in space or good practices need to be done. So right now, the next phase is implementing those guidelines so that we can protect and maintain access to space. And, and uh, in layman's terms, how do, you, like, how do you monitor these things that are moving so fast in such great numbers and, and do that in some kind of regulatory framework with other countries to actually like, what are you doing up there? Okay, so the monitoring is a very high-tech uh, endeavor. Basically, you have, you have a ground-based telescope, so telescopes on Earth at strategic locations, looking up 
overnight and without clouds to track debris. There was also space-based space surveillance, like satellites in space tracking other satellites. And Canada has one operational satellite from DND, Sapphire, that is contributing to what's called the Space Surveillance Network. So it's taking many observations every day to build a catalog of those objects going into space. Some computer system is making a, a projection of orbits and then there, there are chances of having a, uh, collisions every now and then with a miss distance of a certain length and a probability. And this is what triggers operators to further analyze that and make a decision if they have to move or not. Canada is one of the pioneers in satellite technology, and I guess Telesat is going to be in this game, maybe not with as many satellites as, as an Amazon mm -hmm. or SpaceX, but it's going to be up there. Um, can you just talk about, about Canada's kind of role in space, as well as your role in uh, you know, sort of helping to guide where the world is going in regulating and cleaning up? Okay, so yeah, Telesat is going to launch a telecommunication constellation of about 300 satellites. Mm -hmm. um, this is the world where we are now, but Telesat as well as other big players are really co considering this fact uh, very seriously. They want to make sure that they behave properly in space so that access is maintained for the long time. Now, from a government perspective, uh, awareness, regulation, um, design or best practice, design the uh, satellite itself so that it does not generate new debris. Um, best practices on operation, on launch, make sure whenever you launch something that as many parts as possible come down quickly to not generate more debris. Is there, is there a plan to, I don't know, are, are there things happening now in terms of either harpooning the ones that, pieces that are up there or hoovering them up or lasering them out of the sky? Like what, what can you do to kind of reduce the number of space debris that are hazards? Okay, so the design portion is, can be done from the ground. At launch time, the rockets, make sure they come back. And then for what is already in space, this is a bigger question. There are technological, technological challenges, legal challenges. There are many concepts being uh, studied or analyzed. Uh, the European Space Agency is launching a mission in the next few years to go and grab a big heavy part a satellite or a big debris and bringing it down to, to the orbit and burn it. Um, the harpoons, there are different technologies being studied. Uh, Canada has uh, develop, have developed um, like a, a sail, like uh, some kind of a sail so that mm -hmm. the drag of the satellite increases and will go down more quickly. So these are more at the R&D level right now. It's hard for me not to think of uh, the movie Gravity, uh, where you had a, you know, people on a space station and all of a sudden here comes this junk at, at that high speed. Is, is that realistic? I mean, is that a potential problem? If something, say something hits, now you suddenly have way more pieces and then all of a sudden they're all flying towards what, where, where men and women are up in space. Well, for sure, Gravity was passing a good message. Uh, it's a movie, of course. So, yep. uh, but in fact, I was uh, watching this movie when I got a space debris alert, uh, uh -huh. the, the, yeah, so it was with one of the Canadian satellites. Uh, so the, it doesn't happen exactly like in the movie, but uh, a, co a collision between two objects will then, you know, they, they collide at 7.5 kilometers per second, so yeah. it's kind of quick. So they will generate a bunch of debris, which will continue to orbit around the Earth at slightly different speeds, so it, then it generates a bigger cloud, and then all those debris form a, a larger cloud, which will could hurt other satellites and that will fall down uh, at different speeds. So, So how, how scared or how worried should we be uh, as we look forward to a, you know, with this constellation, this web of, of satellites that are going to be above our heads and clearly uh, a lot of space junk still up there? Well, it's a question of space access, so we should not be scared, but we need to make, take measures so that we don't proliferate and create new debris. And mm -hmm. most space actors, national level, uh, like companies, academia, countries are really working at working that out as much as possible. All right, Michel Doyon, thank you very much for talking to us today. This is fascinating because it's real. Thank you very much. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for joining us. For the West Block, I'm Eric Sorensen. <laughs> <laughs>